Dear friends, I am Dr. K. Kannan, Professor Mechanical Engineering, Anjali Ammal Mahalingam Engineering College, Koyil Vinni. I am happy to meet you again in the video lecture on the subject Fluid Mechanics and Machines. And this is lecture number 12.2. We are continuing with our previous discussion on the centrifugal pump. In the previous lecture, we studied about the centrifugal pump, the working principle of the centrifugal pump, work done by the impeller of the centrifugal pump and we calculated the manometric head. And here we, we discuss about the loss of head in the centrifugal pump, efficiency of the centrifugal pump, a specific speed, minimum starting speed, priming of the centrifugal pump, net positive suction head, NPS heads, multi-stage pump and the cavitation in the centrifugal pump. And the learning outcome to the student, at the end of the lecture, the student will be able to calculate the efficiency of the pump, define specific speed of the centrifugal pump, define NPSH, net positive suction head, explain the working of the multi-stage pump and explain the cavitation. So, we calculated the manometric head, equation for calculating the manometric head in the previous lecture and there are some losses in the centrifugal, uh, centrifugal pump loss of head in the centrifugal pump. The first loss is hydraulic losses. The various hydraulic losses are shock and eddy losses and the entrance and exit of the impeller. There will be circulatory flow. Eddy losses is due to the uh, turbulent flow or circulatory flow of the fluid particle and there will be shock. As the fluid is suddenly entering into the impeller, there will be some shock and uh, the loss due to the shock and eddy losses that is called that is that is that is occurring in the impeller. Then frictional losses in the impeller. So there is a con there is contact between the fluid and the metal surface. The impeller is made by metal. So when the fluid is flowing over the metal surface, uh, uh, the friction will occur. So the frictional losses in the impeller, friction and the eddy losses in the guide vein and the casing. So we have a casing, we have the guide vein, we have the diffuser veins. All these me mechanical uh, surfaces, the fluid is flowing through the mechanical metal surfaces. So there will be friction and there will be turbulent uh, flow in the in, inside the centrifugal pump. Uh, the eddy losses are due to the turbulence of the fluid and the friction losses due to the contact of the fluid with the metal surface. So, in the guide vein and the casing. Friction and the minor losses in the suction pipe. So, in the flow through the pipe, we studied about the minor losses. When the, when the water is entering suddenly into a centrifugal pump or suddenly in the, into suddenly enlarging portion of the flow passage, there will be losses. That is what uh, losses, minor losses and again friction minor losses in the suction pipe. So, in the suction pipe, we have the valve, suction valve uh, uh, pipe fitting and we have a lengthy pipe. So, the losses, minor losses, major losses we have to calculate. Similarly, friction and the minor losses in the delivery pipe. So, delivery pipe also there will be frictional losses, there will be some pipe fitting and there will be loss due to the pipe fitting or sudden enlargement or the contraction. So, all these losses of uh, uh, hydraulic energy of the fluid, they are called as hydraulic losses. Then the second losses are the mechanical losses. So, the mechanical losses are disc friction between the impeller and the liquid which fills the clearance space between the impeller and the casing. So, disc friction losses between the impeller and the liquid which fills the clearance space and mechanical friction losses in the main bearing and the gland. So, at the end of the shaft, we have the main bearing, general bearing and there will be gland uh, stuffing box. So, the losses, mechanical friction losses occurring in the gland and the uh, main bearing is called, is the second type of mechanical losses. And leakage losses. The leakage of liquid occurs high pressure area like a gland and the stuffing box and other joints. So, loss of energy due to the leakage is known as leakage losses. So, all these losses we have to calculate. So, leakage losses we can prevent by properly maintaining the system, we can prevent and the friction losses we cannot uh, avoid completely, but we have to find the way to minimize the frictional losses and the turbulent or eddy losses in the centrifugal pump. And once you know the uh, various losses occurring in the centrifugal pump, then we have to calculate the efficiency of the centrifugal pump. The first efficiency is the manometric efficiency. The manometric efficiency is the ratio of manometric head to the head imparted by the impeller to the water is known as the manometric head. So, the manometric efficiency equal to manometric head divided by head important by the impeller to the water. So, manometric head we calculate as HM and uh, what is the head important or the work done by the impeller is uh, VW to U2 by G. So, manometric efficiency equal to GHM divided by 
VW to U2. So, this equation you have to remember. Then the mechanical losses, mechanical efficiency. The ratio of power available at the impeller to the power input to the shaft of the centrifugal pump is known as mechanical efficiency. So, mechanical efficiency eta mechanically equal to power at the impeller divided by power at the shaft. Power at the impeller equal to rho q vw to u2 divided by power at the shaft which is the power given to the uh, pump by means of the electrical system, electrical motor. And the overall efficiency, uh, the overall efficiency power output of the pump, ratio of the power output of the pump to the power input to the pump. So, this is the uh, rho g hm, g into hm divided by power at the shaft which is manometric efficiency and the mechanical efficiency. Then we have to calculate the minimum starting speed. The minimum starting speed of the pump is defined as the speed at which the centrifugal head is greater than the greater than or equal to the manometric head of the pump. Manometric head is the total head to be produced by the centrifugal pump for pumping the water from the uh, from the uh, sump to the tank. So the so the the pump head produced by rotating the impeller by giving the power to the impeller, the head produced by the impeller or the pump should be greater than or equal to the manometric head. Then only the pump will deliver the fluid. So, the delivery, I mean the, the head produced by the pump equal to u2 square by 2g minus u1 square by 2g. So, u2 square is the peripheral speed at the outlet, at the outlet of the impeller and u1 is the peripheral speed at the inlet of the impeller. So, this is the head produced by the impeller which should be greater than or equal to manometric head. So, for the, so the minimum starting speed, so we have to calculate. So, you substitute for u2 square. So, 1 by 2g is a constant. u2 equal to pi d2 n divided by 60 whole square minus pi d2 n divided by 60 whole square d1 n to the power 2 equal to manometric head. And uh, simplifying this, substituting g equal to 9.81 and the pi equal to 3.14 and uh, we can simplify and calculate the n, the minimum starting speed equal to 84.64 into square root of manometric head divided by d square, d2 square minus d1 square. So, the minimum starting, so when the pump is running with this speed minimum, with this minimum speed, then there will be delivery of water to the, uh, to the tank of the system. Then specific speed of the centrifugal pump. The specific speed of the centrifugal pump is defined as the speed of geometrically similar pump which would deliver 1 cubic meter of liquid per second against a head of 1 meter. So, the formula is N s equal to N into square root of Q divided by H m to the power 3 to the 3 by 4 where Q is the discharge, N is the speed, head, H m is the manometric head. And the specific speed of the centrifugal pump is an important parameter for design in the design of the centrifugal pump and it is used to compare the performance of different types of pump of similar capacity. And the priming of the pump. So, we, we discuss in the classification self priming pump, non priming pump, uh, ordinary centrifugal pump. So, priming is the process of filling water in the suction pipe, casing and delivery pipe up to the delivery valve. Uh, keeping the delivery valve closed for removal of air before starting the pump. That is what the priming process. Normally, at the starting of the pump, we have to verify uh, the water is available up to the up to the delivery valve. Uh, if suppose the water is not available, we have to fill it. So we have to fill the water. So without the priming, if you start the pump, there won't be delivery of water. So the priming is the process of filling the filling filling water in the suction pipe casing and delivery pipe up to the delivery valve keeping the delivery valve closed for the removal of air before starting the pump. Thus air from the from these parts of the pump is removed and these parts are filled with liquid to be pumped. The priming is done by the following three methods. This may be manual priming, vacuum priming or self priming. So these are all the three methods for priming the pump. And the next topic is net positive suction head NPSH. So, the NPSH is defined as the total head required to make the liquid flow through the suction pipe to the impeller to the pump impeller that is what the net positive suction head. The head required to make the liquid to flow through the suction pipe to the impeller pump impeller. So, NPSH equal to absolute pressure head at the inlet of the pump 
minus absolute vapor pressure head plus velocity head in the suction line. So, this is NPSH equal to the absolute pressure head is P1 by rho g, absolute vapor pressure head is PV by rho g and velocity head in the suction line is equal to Vs square by 2g. And here, this P1 by rho g equal to Pa by rho g minus Vs square by 2g plus Hs plus Hf, Hcfs, where V s square is the velocity of the water in the suction line, P a is the P a by rho g is the atmospheric pressure head and H s is the suction head and H c f s is the, the frictional uh, head loss to head loss due to the friction in the suction pipeline. Now, we calculate, we substitute the value, we substitute this P 1 by rho g in the previous equation and the N P s h equal to P a by rho g minus V s square by 2 g plus H s plus H f s minus P V by rho g plus V s square by 2 g and simplifying this will be P A by rho g minus P V by rho g minus H s minus H f s. So, this is P A by rho g is the H A, H A is the atmospheric pressure head, P V by rho g is the H V vapor pressure head, H s the height of inlet of the pump from the datum line, H f s the loss of head in the suction pipeline. So, when, when you know all these values, you can substitute here and you can calculate NPSH, net positive suction head in the centrifugal pump. And we discussed the multi-stage centrifugal pump. So, the multi-stage centrifugal pump, there are two types. One is multi-stage centrifugal pump for higher head and multi-stage centrifugal pump for higher discharge. So, the this is the multi-stage centrifugal pump for higher head. So, the Pumps are the impellers are arranged in a, in a common shaft. The outlet of one particular first impeller it is given as the inlet to the second impeller so that the head will be raised. So there will be more head. So the head produced by the impeller uh, pump equal to head produced by the first impeller plus head produced by the second impeller. So the common shaft is there. We have a impeller. The water is entering from the suction pipe to the eye of the impeller and it is flowing through the impeller blade. First stage impeller and the head is raised, the velocity and the pressure is raised. So, with this higher velocity and the higher pressure, the fluid is entering in the second stage impeller, uh, second pump and uh, further the head is increased, the velocity is increased and the high head water, high pressure water is leaving to the delivery pipe. So, this is the uh, multi-stage centrifugal pump for a higher head, for, for generating higher head. And uh, this is multi-stage centrifugal pump for higher discharge. So, this is the pump in parallel and this is pump in series. So, this is, you look at here, all the impeller, two, two pumps are connected in series and here two pumps are working in parallel. There are two different shafts. So, pump 1 and pump 2 separately and uh, for every pump, there will be a suction line. The water is uh, pumped by this fluid is Q1 and water is pumped by the second pump is Q2 and the total discharge equal to Q1 plus Q2. So, this is this kind of arrangement, pump in parallel is used for uh, pumping uh, more discharge or higher discharge in the system. And uh, next to the discuss the about the cavitation. So, cavitation is an undesirable phenomena in the hydraulic machines, particularly in the centrifugal pump and uh, hydraulic turbine. So, the cavitation is a phenomena of local vaporization of liquid in hydraulic machines, when the absolute pressure is equal to or less than the vapor pressure at a given working temperature, small bubble of bubbles of vapor are formed and the boiling occurs. So, the formation of bubble is called as cavitation. So, the cavitation will occur when the velocity of the fluid is increased beyond certain value. So, the cavitation is found to occur at the inlet of the centrifugal pump and the draft tube of the hydraulic turbine. So, centrifugal pump in the inlet of the centrifugal pump, the cavitation will occur and when there is cavitation, the efficiency of the pump will decrease and the efficiency of the turbine also will decrease. So, we have to carefully design and operate the centrifugal pump uh, such that the cavitation is not occurring at the entrance of the centrifugal pump. So, when the what is the phenomena of cavitation you have to understand when the absolute pressure is equal to or less than the vapor pressure at the given working temperature the liquid starts to evaporate liquid starts to vaporize and the vapor bubbles are formed the forming the the, the phenomena of forming vapor, vapor bubble is called as cavitation 
So to understand the cavitation, there is one factor called Thomas cavitation factor is used to used as an indicator whether the cavitation will occur. Thoma cavitation factor for centrifugal pump is defined as sigma equal to Pa by rho g minus Pv by rho g minus Hs minus Hfs divided by Hsm. So, sigma equal to NPSH divided by the Hsm. So, NPSH is the net positive suction head divided by the total manometric head produced by the pump. So, the cavitation will occur if the value of the sigma is less than the critical value. The critical value is related to the specific speed of the centrifugal pump. Sigma c equal to 0.0103 into ns divided by 1000 to the power 4 by 3, where ns is the specific speed of the pump. So, based on the specific speed, we have to calculate sigma c and the sigma c value, sigma c value, uh, actually the sigma value for the pump should be less than the critical value. So, if it is less than the critical value, the cavitation will not occur in the centrifugal pump. And the cavitation may be reduced by the following method. The noise and vibration caused by the cavitation can be reduced by admission of small amount of air to the pump suction. A special material may be used to reduce the pitting of the pump part due to the cavitation. The suction head should be minimum as far as possible. So, the suction head should be minimum as far as possible so that you can reduce the value of, you can decrease the value of the sigma, the thermo cavitation coefficient. So, minimum NPSH condition. So, the suction head that is what minimum NPSH condition. The minimum velocity distribution through the impeller, impeller I and low impeller inlet angle to get low value of low NPSH value. So, we have to achieve lower NPSH value. So, you the design, the design should be such that the NPSH value should be lower so, when you have lower NPSH value, we can avoid the uh, uh, cavitation in the centrifugal pump. So, we stop here. So, the, these are all the books I published earlier in mechanical engineering. So, here you may find one book, uh, Fluid Mechanics and Machinery, uh, published by Vijay Nikola Imprint Chennai. Uh, you can refer to, uh, refer to the book for additional information, problems in the centrifugal pump. And I have a YouTube channel where I upload the video lectures on the subject mentioned here and the solution for the gate question paper is also uploaded in the YouTube channel. You can use, you can subscribe the channel and use the video lectures for your better learning and pass in the gate examination. And uh, thank, thank you for watching. Uh, please post your comments. You subscribe the channel and you can write to my mail ID uh, for any clarification on the subject and we will meet again in another video lecture in the fluid mechanics and machines.